kinematics and more specifically projectile on an inclined plane that has been there so could be a bit of unexpected as regard to je means though when i say unexpected i do not mean to say that it's not in syllabus yes it is certainly but sort of something which is not a regular tracked question all right let's see a plane is inclined at an angle of 30 degree with respect to the horizontal that's been there and a particle is given a speed 2 meter per second and the angle of projection is 15 degree with respect to the inclined plane and we need to calculate the distance from the base at which the particle hits the plane is close to so we need to calculate the range along the inclined plane that has been asked so let's see so this is two meter per second that's the initial speed and let's try to resolve the acceleration as well this direction would be g cos of 30 and this direction of course would be g sine of 30 giving acceleration along x and acceleration along y likewise velocity if you resolve that will be 2 cos 15 and 2 sine 15. Clearly, we are taking x and y as along the inclined plane and perpendicular to the inclined plane. A regular feature, a regular practice we do when it comes to projectile on an inclined plane. Fine. Now, let's see in order to calculate the time of flight first. So, the best thing is that when you talk about time of flight, the y coordinate is 0 or more precisely the y displacement final minus initial so if i go along y i will be getting the y displacement is 0 and the y velocity is 2 sine 15 y acceleration g cos of 30 multiplied by capital t let me call capital t is the time of flight nothing special v equals to u plus of at once you get this thing, now let's calculate the range along the inclined plane. That would be the motion along x. So I would be getting s equals 2. You see, 2 cos 15 multiplied by t, ut, plus half at square. So acceleration will be negative. That's very clear. Multiplied by t square. That's all. Now, from the first, you can calculate the value of time. From the second, just by plugging the value of time here, you can calculate the range along the inclined plane. For those who have the luxury of having memorized the formula, you can straightway calculate the range along the inclined plane. Either way you go, it's equally recommended. You do that, you solve it, and the option that you would be getting would be 20 centimeter. Henceforth, option number two is the correct option for this question. Time to move to the next question. Fifth question, a regular feature question, a simple kinematics equation has to be put in order to get the answer. So here it says there's a bullet of mass 20 gram and before penetrating a mud wall of thickness this much, it has a speed of one meter per second. And the question further says, if the wall offers a resistance of this much, that's a force, we need to calculate the speed of the bullet after emerging from the other side of the wall. Okay, the solution part would be something like this. The retardation offered by the mud wall, that's acceleration equals to F by M, and that is certainly going to be retardation because that would be in the opposite direction, right? So the force is there, the mass is there. And then we need to calculate the speed. So V square minus U square equals to 2AS. Just be slightly careful with the unit. You need to place everything into SI unit. That's all what is required. You solve it, the value of final speed would come out to be 0.7 meter per second. Option number two is the correct one for this question. All right, now let's move to the sixth question. The sixth one, drawn from rotational dynamics and not a difficult one. 
in fact the preliminary level of calculation that is done in rotational motion is here. You see the parameter is very clearly given mass is to the position vector of the particle of course when we say position vector that's with respect to origin. So you see that the position vector is a function of time that means it's moving and here we need to calculate the angular momentum with respect to the origin. Now as I said this is a very very preliminary level and this is certainly going to help boost the confidence of students that's r cross of mv n velocity is of course the derivative of the position vector here so this is straightforward given the velocity can be calculated by derivative of the position vector and simply at the end you need to plug two second in place of time you do that that's a straightforward calculation and you would be getting option number four as the correct option all right now let's move to the next one the seventh. 